Good morning, and may the 4th be with you. It is Star Wars shirt day, just so you know. Although by the time you see this, may the 4th will be over. <laughs> anyway, it's a gorgeous day here in Carolina. It looks like we're going to have another week of really great spring weather. So we'll be focusing on outside stuff that we want to get done before the summer heat and humidity hits. I am uh, out here in the front yard with the 70D. Um, setting up to film the bluebirds hopefully going into and out of their box it's possible the babies have hatched at this point I don't see them but I hear their little turtle the bluebird turtle uh, close by so I think they're waiting for me to leave the area which I'm going to do and let the camera do its thing I did see the hummingbird come over and eat uh, suck nectar on these flowers yesterday but it wasn't when I was sitting with my camera waiting. So I missed the video. I missed the uh, um, pictures. But uh, maybe. We'll see. So many things to film in the spring. So little time. So Ruby's having a little meltdown this morning. Apparently she's sending random signals to the garage door to the home link to open and close the garage door. Yep. We had this problem before we had the MCU replaced. Um, I'll try to reboot her when I get ready to go someplace. Right now I don't have the key fob or my phone on me. Yeah, that's at least the third time we've noticed that she's opened it and then it'll go partially closed and then it'll open again. It's definitely a multiple time thing this morning. I've been meaning to change out my mini flags. You know, believe it or not, I don't have a Star Wars one. So maybe at some point I should have at least one Star Wars one. But I'm going to put up generic spring and summer now take down Easter. Live, love, laugh. Happily, generously, daily. Definitely part of my motto. <laughs> it came down a minute ago. It just started back up again and then stopped. I really have to go reboot Ruby. We are having an internet outage right now. Dawn has just rebooted the router and the cable modem just in case that will help. Sometimes it does. You know, things blip and then we don't come back up right. But she continued to open and close the door while I was out there. So let's uh, reboot her and see if it stops. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm game. It could be A doing it, but I don't think so. All right. She came up, is still connecting to uh, LTE. And let's see. I'll go close the door. Let's see if we have any more random <laughs> door things. I'm close to the wall again. Sigh. I also noticed that Ruby's only at 89 miles, which is plenty to go to Kyle's house and back to follow Don and take the bolt back to him. But uh, I think I have 35 minutes until we go on shoulder. I think it's still off peak right now because we're on the summer schedule. I'll double check when I go in the house, but hi, buddy. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. So first up today is uh, drive the bolt back to Kyle. I'm going to follow Don and Ruby and then of course we'll come back and Ruby together. And Don is uh, packing up the charging uh, cable that goes with the car. After I rebooted Ruby, which also coincided with the internet coming back up because Don rebooted the router and the cable modem, um, I did not see any more hokey pokey with the garage door. Your guess is as good as mine, but it stopped doing it, so that's good. And Ruby added just shy of 20 miles in the time that I had her charging before it went to peak. That was actually on shoulder charging, but I have 106 miles now, which is more than I need, but I'm very comfortable with the little bit that I added in. So here's a situation where my headlights are on auto and it's perfectly sunny out and my headlights are on. My headlights should not be on. I should just have the little running lights. Um, this is something that cropped up in 2020.12. I don't know which dot release, but at some point, a bunch of divas were talking about it on Facebook. Um, you know, I can turn them to parking and I can turn them to on or off, but on auto, that's what auto is. When the sun is out, it should be parking, and when there's not enough light, it should be on. 
um, and it's just not doing that cons at least not consistently so Don was telling me right. that he got to use the blind spot detection in the mirrors it's in the mirrors on this car that's right and um, so if you actually check your mirrors before you get over as soon as you I mean if it's not clear in the lane the, obviously the car has already turned the little indicator on so when you look in the mirror you're gonna notice the yellow I noticed it immediately you don't have to um, you hunt know, for it hunt for it so uh, if you're a person who checks the mirrors before they get over then that blind spot warning is going to be very effective I think that that that's a well uh, thought out uh, from that point of view uh, and the other thing I've sort of learned is you can't open the console when it's pushed Hello. forward oh hey there How's it going? very well uh, you um, you have to slide it back and then it will open so it's kind of weird but I'm well uh, different it took me a while to figure out how to open the console for the record, it seems like business as usual out here as far as the number of cars on the road and the number of cars at various shopping locations. Not really much else to say. Um, the only place Don and I were was Kyle's house to drop the bolt off. And we didn't see anybody. Yeah, he was up at the track today. Um, so, you know, we haven't been anywhere. I decided to come back down here and um, set up the camera again this afternoon. I didn't like the way the sun shadow was this morning. I don't know if I got any good footage then or not. And I see somebody sticking their head up out of the hole. I wouldn't have thought the babies were old enough to do that yet, but they might be. And I hear a parent in the tree over to my left. There's also somebody burning today and I smell smoke. came home tux was on the bridge but you know he's over here helping me now hey buddy you gonna come back up with me you gonna walk of course you are it's my good boy hey there so we're gonna put our little pull chain in. I'm trying to kill just a little bit of time today I think I'm gonna try to put it right through here and have it dang down I'll, I'll uh, hang down I'll let it adjusted based on uh, what Marianne can reach. Obviously the wires are on this side would be real easy. It was on that side, but it, I'll just put it over here. Have to drill a hole. He's got his hole drilled. He's got the pull switch wired in. He's trying to yeah. hook it up to the hole now. Yeah. Is your hole big enough? Yeah, it seems to be. Barely, but it does seem to be big enough. Pretty slick. I didn't know you could do that. Like convert an on off light to a pull string light if you wanted to. I had no idea that was even allowed a possibility. So I'm pretty impressed. Thank you. So do you want to see where my arm goes? I want to see where your arm goes. Okay, Kitten, show me how high you can reach. So that's where you want. That's pretty comfy. So maybe like right here. Yeah, right I'm there. I'm right there. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. And Johnny's taller than me, me now by yeah. a smidge, so he should be able to reach it too. I agree. Well, I have to say page 38 and 39, and I guess actually to some extent 
36 and 37 where we're learning about sharps and playing um, the note to the right and we're learning about flats and playing the note to the left that introduces the black keys on the piano and these are harder I think I've got it I actually had to go play these on the internet on YouTube had to look them up so I could hear them and then just really really study not only is it introducing the flat here but it has you with your hands on the center G versus the center C and C is easier and G is harder anyway I've really had to work on these these weren't just like oh that's a nice tune and come up and play it I actually have had to think about it and play it and grumble while I was playing it and finally can play them so but you got to stick with it you know you got to stick with it not it's not a race to get to the end of the book it's just a stick with it until you got that one down and when you've got it practiced it enough move on to the next one so I am sticking with it but it wasn't easy the past day or two with these flats one more time good so uh, I fell on my butt about I don't know seven days ago ten days ago something like that yeah. I was looking for tucks and I came down the walkway yeah, these tricky. and I wasn't looking at the steps and I think I hit the one on the corner right here where it's kind of it is really raised and anyway I stumbled and you know I banged myself up a little bit nothing serious no broken bones or anything but it's not the first time I've fallen on these steps since I moved into the house and I kind of have asked Don a couple times can we do something different than the walkway um, part of the problem is is when the power washer guy comes if we don't remember to tell him yeah. he power washes the stones and gets the dirt out from around them and then they're not flush with the ground good anymore right they, they used to be better so tell them why we don't want to just put in cement right well besides the fact that I really can't do cement I mean, I'd have to like hire somebody or go buy a cement mister or, or I just don't want to mess with cement. Um, the septic tank field is right here. And just as, you know, most people, they have good luck, but what would happen with me if I poured cement and got it all nice and textured, because you know, Marianne, she'd want this kind of a fake texture in it, you know. <laughs> Since, like a pattern yeah, and since I'd I'm, probably be happy with kitty footprints yeah but and since I'm hiring somebody you know it would be dyed red brick and have the brick pattern in there because pro professional I'd have a professional come do it right right and so a week after he leaves then our septic tank would have problems and I'd have to hire a group guy with a backhoe and the first thing you do is run over this that. being the septic tank for those not sure yes and so he would come out here in the backhoe and he'd run over my nice new concrete thing busted the pellet back and so then I would be out money for the septic tank because I put the concrete here causes the septic tank to go out <laughs> and um, then I have to pay somebody to come back so I don't want to put concrete down so I want to put something down I'm thinking about a, a deck wood decking uh, type of uh, walkway a boardwalk a boardwalk and uh, if if my septic tank comes out I can come out here with my uh, drill gun pretty easy and because I'm going to screw it together maybe take some lag bolts out or screws or something and pull move it out, out of the move way it out of the way and then when the guy comes out with his back hole but since I have it where I can pick it up then I won't have any septic tank problems so this is one of those things you have to be me to understand how all this works right now we can do another fake so I'm guessing that's going to require a drawing and some planning on how much wood we need and how we want it to look. And Dawn, if you might remember, is actually really good at uh, architectural drawings with, with, the, with the piece of paper and a pencil. I, I, I took um, only a year. I took um, a year of mechanical drawing in high school and I, I was really into it. I didn't just show up for class. I really was into it and uh, I have done drawings since then 
uh, over the years and I used to have a two 2D CAD program, but um, anyway, I don't have it. Long story short, I'm going to do a little measuring here now, and I'm going to have to get out a, a line and get some um, elevations because uh, the driveway is at, is one fixed point, and obviously the um, doorway is the other, and then of course the steps. So all of those are going to interact because uh, there's going to be a step down here, probably. You step from the driveway to one step to the top of the walkway. And then it's pretty then flat it's a pretty over to the, the, the back of the house, yeah, over there well, where the door about, is. About where he's laying, uh, the cat's laying on that platform. That'll be the probably very close to the top. But if you look very close at that, you will notice the steps. The last step into the house is taller than the first two, the, the two actual steps. It, it's not off by much, but it's a little bit off. And so um, I'm going to totally replace all of this, but I'm going to do equal steps. So there'll probably still be two steps, but they'll be equal. And so it'll be three equal steps between here, here, and there. And so this height right here, the boardwalk's going to be in this general neck of the woods, but it probably will not be exactly what that is. Like I said, I'm going to take all this out and board it, uh, put the boardwalk here, and then put build steps, two steps, and have them set on the boardwalk and a handrail and all that other kind of stuff. But um, I'm going to get the boardwalk down first. Right, well, the boardwalk's going to be wide enough there won't be a rail on, four feet on it. It's, yeah, we're ju it's just going to be wide enough you're not, and it won't be high up off the ground. No, we're talking a matter of inches. An inch or two, that's right. Yeah, and Don had talked about redoing the cat thing, and I kind of said, well, maybe let's do the boardwalk first, and we get that under our belt. We can talk about if we want to build a fancier looking, or even just paint it or something with the... Yeah. Well, it, I, you know, part of the thing that Marianne wanted to come out and talk about this is that, you know, I have an idea. I don't know if it's, it's going to work yet. I have ideas. I'm going to have to formulate them. It's kind of lay it out and see what you know pros and cons of whatever I do so I'm not this is not cast in concrete yet um, and I haven't bought any wood yet so uh, you know I have total uh, autonomy to change and redo whatever I want it's it's free at this point you know once you start digging up stuff and tearing up stuff and taking the steps out and all that you know you pretty much committed and you can't you know, this may turn out to be more of a job I want to fool with, for example. I don't know. We're going to, we're going one step at a time. The first thing I'm going to do is get, get all the, get accurate measurements and things of that nature. So right here, this front corner of the cat platform um, will come from right about where it is, basically out eight feet and just over to this edge. But the rest of it will be four feet. And Don is looking right now at um, how far over from the house from the septic. This is really the um, narrowest spot right here where the septic tank is. Right. Uh, that kind of dictates where the four foot has to start from. So we're thinking 40 inches, but counting the foundation, 42 inches out from the house. Yeah. Okay. Plus a four, then four foot wide walkway. Right. And that leaves us how far from the cement edge of the septic tank? Uh, a foot. Okay. And then right here at the edge of the cat thing is where the walkway would end and the platform area would begin. Right. And we're talking about going out 10 foot. So to the end of this tape out here. Right. And Don says that's in the drain field, so we would put the post in farther. We're not. We're only going to be a few inches off the ground. Right. So. Um, exactly correct. And these boards will all be going perpendicular to the house. The only thing that's going to be angled is the steps. That's the current thought process, subject to change. And then a little bit of this corner area over here, obviously, well, it's rounded now, but um, it would be a little less rounded after we do this. 
so I've got uh, most of the measurements. I'm gonna go get my stair hanger measurements um, uh, from the the stairs on the side of the driveway because I bought those stair tread hangers. So I'm gonna use buy them again. So I'll, I don't remember what they are. Um, but the other thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna get our laser when it gets dark, close to dark, we're gonna come out with my laser level and I'm gonna shoot a line and figure out the threshold of the door to the asphalt what's the difference in height so that we can calculate how many steps on that end and the steps on this end and the height of the platform sounds like a plan yeah. i'm walking to retrieve my camera don's uh unicycling it down to the driveway steps well, this way i could just go down and back if i walk down with you i'd have to come back and forth walking 15 times <laughs> Works for me. This view from the bridge up through those really tall cinnamon ferns. I just love it. When we were shredding up the tree the other day, this is where Don put all of the mulch we made. He was just making sure his trail here through the woods doesn't go away. Didn't quite have enough to finish. See the little orange petals down there? Those are from the big tulip poplar here. Um, it has flowers when it's mature up really high. I took a few pictures of them off the front porch earlier. Gray. I've seen her up there a couple times lately. I uh, decided I'd like to go ahead now that it's all nice and shady and mow the grass while the pork loin is in the oven. I figure I can mow about as fast as the pork loin can cook, so. All done. I found three fire ant mounds. Although, thankfully, I found them before they found me. Not good that they're out there, though. So Don had done a preliminary drawing outside yeah. with measurements and stuff. Um, you know, for me, it's a final drawing, but for him, it was a preliminary drawing because he's so good at it. He's been working on another more refined drawing in here. So, uh, you going to still do it on software also? Um, undecided. Undecided. Okay. And obviously, the point of the drawing is A, so we are in agreement that what we thought we said is what we said, that our measurements add up, and so he can figure out supplies. How's it going? Uh, it's going okay. All right. I got food for you. Yum. That's what I'm waiting for. So, Mr. Don's out there taking those measurements he wanted with the laser level, and uh, he's showing Johnny how to use it. Yep. Take a tape measure, and you put it on the ground, and you read whatever the line, where it hits. That says 50 inches. So that's 50. Well, what you should do, which I tried to show your mom earlier, is you need to kind of draw a... a We're going to get to use the Pythagorean theorem? Well, maybe Johnny. No, I know how to use it. <laughs> well, I didn't say Donnie was going to use it. That's 47 and a quarter there. Yeah. Well, it does slope downhill, so that yeah, makes well, sense. No, I mean, I, I need that. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 49 Dead center of the current walkway? Yeah, well, of where the, you know, more or less, I say 49 inches, right? 